DOS TV Network mobile app is now available. You can now catch up on our breaking news, stream our programs live. Watch out for the latest update on sport and politics as they unfold. You can also get notifications for our upcoming programs and events. All these on our TOS TV Network mobile app. Available on Apple Store and Google Play Store. TOS TV News from Africa by Africans. Being a journalist means in-depth analysis that unravels hidden truths, that question the status quo and fact-checks government. These criminal elements hiding under the cloak of surveillance contractors are the APC elements. Do you have facts to prove that? that? Being a journalist means waking up every day with a burning desire for peace, equity and justice for all citizens. We're being told that the choice you have is to take the lesser of two evils. It means patriotism via the prism of objectivity and accountability. It means giving my platform to the masses to discuss issues that matter to them. Some of them, if they bring budget and the budget they lose, some of them sleep. They're going to ask how much you are on. I have it. Thereby shaping government policies and laws. My name is Osasu Ignatia, and I am the People's Journalist. Hello everyone, welcome to today's program. We'll be speaking to the Honorable Minister of Transportation, Right Honorable Chibuke Rotimia Mechi, about the guidelines to reopen in a post-COVID-19 era. We've heard from the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 about the guidelines that will be implemented for airspaces as well as road travelers. However, what guidelines have been put in place to open up our rail lines? This and many more will be discussed. Don't go anywhere, it promises to be a very educative episode. transportation in Nigeria dates back to the 19th century when our first rails were constructed by the British colonial government in the year 1898. The British colonial masses constructed the Lagos Railway and the Barrow Canal Lines to open the region to commerce and to ease the movement of people and resources to and fro England. Subsequently, in October 1912, the amalgamation of the Lagos and the Barrow Canal Railway by Frederick Lugard, Beth, a nationwide rail service. In 1955, the company metamorphosed into the Nigeria Railway Corporation, serving almost 42 million Nigerians with ease. Uh, the <clears throat> history of Nigeria Railway Corporation is a very long one. Uh, it predates the Nigerian nation, started in about uh, 1893 or thereabout. Uh, that is uh, over 100 years ago about 130 years ago and the Nigerian nation just celebrated uh, six years of independence so you can see the gap it was uh, a colonial construction purposely for the movement of resources from the hinterland to the coastal areas where it could be shipped to Europe for the benefit of the industry especially in the United Kingdom then the present railway infrastructure we have dates back to 1898 when the first line was constructed and uh, during the colonial days uh, continued to be extension you know from here and there until um, all the narrow gauge uh, lines were constructed totaling about 3505 kilometers and um, one of the primary reasons for establishing the railway was to connect the interland to the 
um, seaport so that um, exports could be made. And exports include cocoa from the west, granite from the north, and also palm oil from the east. Nigeria was essentially divided into three regions, which later, much after independence, uh, was divided into four regions. We had Midwest. So railway also followed that pattern. Um, it connected Kano to Ibadan, Ibadan to Lagos. Uh, we had another track coming from the eastern belt of Nigeria, Maiduguri to Calabar. Uh, Calabar also had a seaport that was functional at the time. Um, all of these were to connect, to move goods essentially, and more, and more importantly, humans from one area uh, to another. It was a major factor for integrating Nigerians. Uh, people could do days and hours in the rails, and it was a major factor for building unity in Nigeria. Just after the war, uh, a lot of things changed in Nigeria. One of them was the face of railway. After acquiring about 3,505 kilometer rail network over the years, there were changes in administrations and policy which led to the decay of the railway sector. Uh, first was mismanagement on the on part of government. Uh, government did not pay causal attention to railway management. We had, you know, railway was functional at um, pre, I mean, colonial era to early independent. But the moment military men started showing their face in administration, not so much energy and concerns were put on railway because railway is actually for the masses, it's, it's for goods, it's to save our roads. It's not only the railways, a lot of infrastructure suffered a lot of decay. You know, our level of maintenance and the patronage and uh, the character, unfortunately I don't want to use the word to say a national character, our character of uh, non-challenge to public uh, institutions and public uh, infrastructure is part of it. You could see why is the way is the railway, why is NITEL. <clears throat> this, these were huge investments made in the colonial days. The airline is gone, NITEL is gone. I did not mean for this effort the railways also would have been gone. No budgetary provision for maintenance. Uh, uh, I was in the system when nine months of salary was not paid at the time, various times, three months of salary not paid. Staff would go on strike and on their own return back. It was that bad. Railway business is a very capital intensive business. And the moment you starve railway or funding, it will go down the drains. And that was exactly what happened. You know, the, func the, the funding wasn't forthcoming. Uh, I have said it now that it's a capital intensive venture. The cost of a locomotive alone can do uh, uh, a lot of roads. So you can imagine. And as at that time, we had a lot of rolling stock, you know, but when you don't invest, you know, in uh, taking care of this rolling stock, especially in terms of um, spare parts, they are bound to, uh, you know, deteriorate. Apart from that, capitalists also maximized uh, the fact that railway was going down and they led the barrier of rail system because they want to maximize roads, they want to put their trucks on the road, they want to decide what happens. The truth is that organizations that are not so powerful rely 100% for logistics of their goods. Those who are powerful could afford to put trucks on the road. So what you do if railway is not functional is, be, is that you become a monopoly of some sort. So when you ensure that what your competitor is using to breed, the lifeline of your competitor is off the hook, is off the way, and then you become a captain. So you, you see new people, new millionaires and billionaires imagine just after the death of railway. For 50 years, Nigeria's railway sector paled in comparison to its African counterpart. Realizing the negative effect on the economy and standards of living, the Nigerian government saw it necessary to revive and modernize the railway system to meet its developmental aspirations. In the build-up to the return of a once vibrant railway sector, a 25-year strategic plan was formed in the year 2002. Its implementation did not commence until President Goodluck Jonathan took over. His administration saw to the restructuring of the Nigeria Railway Corporation, followed by the rehabilitation of the entire dilapidated 3,505 kilometers railway network covering the western, eastern, and northern lines, 
While work was on the way, the President Muhammadu Buhari administration took over. Thankfully, this administration saw it wise to finish and then expand on pre-existing lines built by the previous administration. Honorable Minister of Transportation, Right Honorable Chibuke Rotimi Amechi, welcome to the Yosasu Show. Thank you very much. Yeah, most welcome. We've heard from the Presidential Task Force on the reopening guidelines for the airspaces, interstate travel, but we haven't quite heard a detailed guideline for the train services. What are some of the measures that you have put in place to reopen the train services? We're not in a hurry to reopen the train services. We're actually not in a hurry. I had a conversation with, uh, with the technical, the chairman that's in, that's in charge of the technical activities of COVID, uh, COVID committee. And I did say, uh, economically it's not wise. First, you have about 88 passengers per coach. And for you to run social distancing on any of those coaches, then you have to do about 40 passengers per coach. You're making a total loss. We currently, we, we make about 120 million naira per month, right? And we spend at full capacity. At full capacity, okay. And we spend about uh, uh, 90 million naira per month. Now, if you run at 40 pass, 40 passenger per coach, then you, you you will not be making 120. You're making like 60 million naira, and you will still be spending 90. So we're back to making a loss, and then uh, you have to then be subs, uh, subsidi subsidizing the, the, the operational activities. We don't have that kind of money now. That's one. Two, in terms of uh, health, you know, when I hear people say, oh, well, there's this equipment to bring in, that will, uh, how you spray and find, uh, uh, clean up anybody who's going to enter the train to make sure they don't have COVID and all that. And I ask the question, what about the asymptomatic patients? What happens to them? They will not be positive to, to fever. They will enter the train. Just one person can infect the 40 persons in the coach. And uh, you know, the doors are open. If he moves around the, the entire coaches, the chances are that he could infect others. So until I'm clear about how we will not infect people, because before the COVID, we were moving 4,300 passengers per day. Now, even if you bring it down to 2,300 passengers per day, that means you'll be infecting 2,000 persons per day. That won't be easy. Certainly not won't be easy. But we're looking at, we're going to hold a meeting next week to see how possible it is to travel without infecting so many persons. One of the ways is that it will be mandatory that everybody must wear a mask. We increase the number of policemen we have in the train so that that can be enforced. Everybody must own and have hand sanitizer, not just we cleaning you up at the airport. At the so the people who are going to be riding the train must, must come in with, with their own hand, hand sanitizer. sanitizer. Is that going to be provided by government? No, 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 no. They have to. They, they have, have to, to purchase of it course, themselves. themselves. Because the intention the is that, look, it's about life. You have to stay alive. No matter how much the hand sanitizer costs, you have to stay alive. The intention is that as you walk into the train, in every 15, 20 minutes, please, you need to use that hand sanitizer to clean up your hands and all that. Because you could touch the train, I mean, the chairs, you could touch so many things you, and all that. Then you must, there is no way you will move the face mask. The police must enforce that face mask. Until you get out of the train and out of the station, you must wear your face mask. What happens after you've left the station, that is not my business. And that is the business of the, of the railway, Nigerian Railway Corporation. It seems to me that you don't agree with the Presidential Task Force and the reopening of uh, travel interstate and the airlines as well because you've clearly elucidated that you fear for the risks, you fear for the lives of citizens who will be riding the train, therefore you don't want I, to reopen. I didn't, I didn't talk about, I didn't talk about the, uh, the flight because I'm not the Minister for Aviation, no, so I don't know what measures they put in place. All I said mm -hmm. is that unlike the aircraft, the aircraft maximum will be 500 passengers. But in the train where you have about 14 to 20 coaches, multiply 88 by 20, it's about nearly 700 and something passengers, or about 700 passengers. You're not dealing with five. That's, if you now do 20, 20 something coaches, because we brought in more coaches, we brought in new locomotives and all that. The moment you do that, you have a situation where so you're saying those who are flying by, going by air, traveling by air, don't stand the same risk as those who are traveling by train? No, I didn't say that. I don't, why I didn't say that? I don't know what measures the Minister for Aviation has put in place to checkmate 
uh, the infection. So it's similar to the wearing of face masks, hand sanitizing. Oh, okay. Okay, but I said that, that first I'm expressing my personal fears. Okay. But even if I, I must overcome those personal fears to get the trains to run, mm. then we must, we must ensure that everybody is wearing his face mask and you wear it from beginning to mm. the end of the journey. Mm. Secondly, you must have your personal hand sanitizer and you must apply it in every 10, 5, five 10, 15 minutes mm. regularly until we get out of the train. What I'm trying to get at, uh, Honourable Minister, we're seeing a lot of countries reopening due to the impact on the economy. And we understand that in Nigeria, we need to implement similar measures to salvage our economy. However, we're also seeing the return to lockdown of most of these countries due to the escalation of COVID-19 cases. So I want to get you, your own personal... You've answered the question. Why do you want me to answer the question? So your they, personal they, thoughts they, is that we should no, not be traveling at this time? No, no, no. I don't want to tell you my personal thoughts. You've answered the question. You've answered the question by saying that as they reopened, so the, the, there, was, there was an increase in COVID-19 uh, infections. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what you that, said. That. So and in your ministry, you're going to keep the trains locked down until you're the, sure uh, you No, 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 no. We're, we're going to work out. We're going to look at the possibility of, would we even do a test run? Because it's not good to, uh, I spoke with the governor of Kaduna said he's, he's wondering when we, op when we open the train services. Uh, but I must know that we're not transferring because Nigeria wouldn't have been affected if not for those who came, out, who came from outside the country, right? So we must say we're not transferring other COVID patients or COVID infection from Abuja to Kaduna or from Kaduna to, to Abuja. We must ensure that lives are not lost because key to governance is about lives of, of, of Nigerians. Hmm. I'm just wondering the sustainable measures, because I know you don't want to explicitly say it, but it sounds to me that, you know, you have those worries and fears which are um, justified. However, moving forward, we know the trains cannot be locked down for so long. You said you want to do the test runs uh, with the trains. When is that going to happen? I don't know. First is that we have to get the president convinced to do a, a virtual commissioning of the DMUs. DMUs are not the diesel mo is a motoring unit, which are aerodynamic in nature and this faster. Uh, once he commissions it, we'll do a test run with it and see how we manage passengers vis-a-vis -vis COVID. Uh, I'll, I'll hold a meeting the next one week to see how to commission that. That's, that's, that's what happened. How are you rethinking operations in a post-COVID era? Before COVID, we saw a lot of videos, which were quite embarrassing, I should say, of people literally fighting themselves to get tickets at the train then there stations. Were not, there were not enough. enough uh, so how, what measures are you putting in place more, now to ensure... Bought them more coaches. Okay. That's what I would say. That's I mean, what I say. To, to purchase the tickets, not no, even to... The problem wasn't ticketing. The problem okay. was there were not enough seats. That's why. Now That's they, why are, they were fighting yes, to Yes, of get course. Tickets. If there were enough seats, you can, you can wait. Whenever the man buys his own and goes, you buy yours. But have you thought of more digital measures you can put in place, like been purchasing approved. your tickets online? That has been approved by cabinet. Okay. Now, it must allow the, whoever the concessionaire is to uh, finish installing their infrastructure that will help buy, make people buy tickets online. But has it been approved by cabinet? The answer is yes. As a, is, a, is the uh, concessionaire working? The answer is yes. And how long will that take for implementation? <laughs> Maybe you think I'm the person, I'm the concessionaire. You're the minister. <laughs> I'm laughing because as a minister, I must know everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're not quite sure when the implementation... No, as soon as possible. They're working. It's okay, a digital, because I'm wondering it's a how process. we're going to operate in a post-COVID era. I don't see us lining up the same No, way. that won't be the same again. Okay. In fact, one way to purchase tickets to avoid uh, COVID... 19 is to purchase online mm -hmm. so that, that won't be that won't be that there's no going about there's no denying that fact that the days where individuals will come to uh, uh, the station and buy a manual ticket seem to be getting to an end that will not be the right way to go the right way to go with everybody well majority of them because there are those who can't even operate <laughs> the computer mm -hmm. and so we must provide for them but you see they'll be the number will be reduced Finally, Honorable Minister, um, when I spoke to you in 2016, uh, during the flag off of Abuja to Kaduna, you talked about the lack of profitability of the railway line. And most times, government do it um, as an altruistic measure for their citizens. But you just spoke to me now that finally, the railways in Nigeria are profitable. You're grossing about 120 million per month, although your overhead is quite high at 90 million. What other measures are you going to put in place post-COVID, knowing the impact of the 
knowing the impact of the pandemic on the economy to ensure that you keep on running at um, a profit. Why do you say the, uh, the overhead is high? You pay salaries, don't forget, a lot of people pay salaries too. You do maintenance every week. You buy mm, diesel every week. I repeat, and I want to say to you that the idea is not for train services to make profit. The idea is for train services to grow the economy. And I, I say to Nigerians, railway services not for passengers. Railway services are essentially for cargoes. And that's where the money will come from. Why we broke even in this case is because of the pressure from those who are avoiding to use the Kaduna Abuja road. And we are glad. That's why we've increased the coaches now. There were 14 coaches. We brought another 10 now to make it um, between 24 and 30 coaches. Now, if we are doing 88 uh, per coach, that's quite a large number. And now the frequency of uh, services, it will be like every one hour to two hours, you are sure of catching a train heading to Kaduna or a train coming from Kaduna to Abuja. So you can take your time to, to board the train. So let me get this right. You're not looking to You've make come a again because he said finally and, and I have to No, be no, no. I just want to clarify. You, you, you are not looking to make a profit through the railway line. No, no, no. Why, why, am I, why are we in services? I'm just saying that that's not the, that's not the ultimate. Okay. That's not the ultimate. The ultimate is to provide services. But you must know that the essence of a railway service is, is to grow the economy. So cargoes are able to, you're able to move cargoes on time and all that. Those who move uh, food items, manufactured goods and others are, have opportunity to be able to move that in a speedy, speedy manner. How many cargo train uh, coaches do you have juxtaposed to passenger uh, coaches? You no, know, for now we are dealing with passengers, but because there are no, co there are no cargoes in, in between Kaduna and Abuja. So we have just a few spots where you can put your cargo, uh, not even cargoes, those who carry suitcases and all that. But once you see enough cargo activities, we'll move them from, we'll move cargo uh, wagons from Lagos into Abuja. Okay, for Lagos to Ibadan, you have we have how many? We, we have purchased about, we, we place order for about 200. Cargo. Okay, they're not in Nigeria yet. No, they will be finally manufactured in Nigeria. But we already have some that have been delivered at the same time as this, for in case we, we need them. But what we agree with them is that the uh, Kajuala factory will do that. We'll manufacture, we'll do the final manufacturing of the... But as of today, there are only passenger coaches. Maybe I need to speak Benin. I said, <laughs> we, I said we have some in case okay. we have that pressure. So you, you said you have 200 that you're manufacturing. Locally, but we have some. Which if do you know pressure, the number? I wouldn't know the number. That would be the job. So right now we have more passenger coaches than cargo coaches. Because that's, coaches. The, that's, the, that's the focus. The but moment, your end goal is to have more cargo coaches. Yeah, because we want to eliminate the crisis we have at the seaport. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any final words? No, just to say thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Honorable Minister of You're Transportation. Welcome. That's You're it welcome. for today's program. Do follow us on social media at TOS TV Network, at Osasu Igbenadion, at The Osasu Show, and at The Osasu Show Foundation on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. To read news on sustainable development and current affairs across Africa, you could visit our website, www.tostvnetwork.com. I'll see you same time, not the same place, back in our virtual studio next week. And until then, take very good care of yourself. God bless you. DOS TV Network mobile app is now available. You can now catch up on our breaking news, stream our programs live. Watch out for the latest update on sports and politics as they unfold. You can also get notifications for our upcoming programs and events. All these on our TOS TV Network mobile app. Available on Apple Store and Google Play Store. TOS TV News from Africa by Africans. What a joyful noise! Sounds like Happy something we've been waiting day. for. It's a good feeling. The Nigerian skies have reopened for business. The Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority, NCAA, welcomes you back on board. As we fly again, feel confident. NCAA is working closely with airlines, airport operators, relevant health authorities, and all stakeholders to make air transport services safe and customer focused. But we urge you to please take responsibility. Let's keep coronavirus at bay. Whether you are a passenger, service user, or service provider, wear a face mask, maintain social distance, observe all COVID-19 guidelines, 
on ground and on board. NCAA says it's safe to fly again, so we're good to go. Remember, at Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority, we always have your back. Fly safe, stay safe. NCAA, ensuring safety and efficiency in air transport and navigation.